We're live. We're live. Okay. Uh, call the meeting of the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen for March 3rd, 2021 to order. May we have a roll call, please? Yes. Five selectmen are present as well as town council and the town administrator. Uh, let's see. I'll have uh, Steve Ruiz lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Isn't it the second? Since he's on the screen. Yes, it is the second. Okay. He said the third, so. Did I say the third? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. flag. The United, United States, States of America. America. And to the Republic, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stand, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you very much. Announcements, Alan. <clears throat> okay. I just have one. Give me a second here. Okay. Uh, as everybody knows, we're now an age friendly community uh, through AARP, et cetera. Uh, it'll be a survey that's going to be sent out through the COA mailing list. The survey is required as a finishing piece in order to apply for grants, et cetera. It's also going to be up on the town website. And they're also, I think Matt's going to try and put it on Facebook so people can download it and actually email it back. Uh, we appreciate very much if people take the time and either do it online or do it you know, manually through the uh, COA uh, mailer or again on the town website. This will help us, again, like say, getting grants, et cetera, to be able to expand the COA programs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Patrick. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'll do it later. Uh, Jim. Um, yeah, I'll have a couple of quick ones. Um, we have a, n a number of employment opportunities within the town. So I would, um, people should check out the website under residents employment opportunities. Uh, and that includes uh, full-time intermittent summer positions and um you know just letting everybody know there's a number of them out there in, in different areas in addition we have a number of openings on different boards and uh, we can always use some residents to step up and, and take part and, and be part of town government and uh please consider um applying thank you thank you uh judy yep i have a few thank you our community of Wareham has many opportunities for those who have food insecurity. The school continues to provide free meals five days a week to students who live in Wareham. In addition, the Y is providing free box lunch food boxes twice a week at two different locations on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 5.30, the food is available at the Gleason Family YMCA. On the same days, the food is available at the East Wareham School on Depot Street from 10 to 12. Almost all of the town's churches have meals once a week, as well as pantries. If you or your neighbor are in need of food, please feel free to reach out. All of those things that we've been talking about are on the town <coughs> website now. Wareham Garden Club is awarding a $1,000 scholarship to graduating high school seniors and college students. Applicants should have been legal residents of Wareham for at least a year and have a minimum of a B or a 3.0 average. Scholarships are available for students with focus of study in one or more of the following areas, horticulture, environmental studies, floriculture, land management, botany, biology, conservation, landscape design or architecture, forestry, agronomy, city planning or allied subjects. High school students must be graduating in the spring of 2021 and have been accepted to a college or other post-secondary school. Scholarship applications will be available at area high schools, guidance offices. College students must be currently enrolled at a college, provide transcripts and submit an application. All applications and materials must be postmarked on or before March 31st, 2021. Council on Aging continues to offer its Tuesday and Thursday grab and go meal, which must be reserved the week ahead of the time that you wanna pick it up. 
The number to sign up for this program is 508-291-3130. Last week, I mentioned that the Wareham Library Foundation continues to look for donations from the citizens. In order to continue to have our library certified, the friends and of the library and the Wareham Library Foundation need to come up with about $65,000 between now and the year end. Um, www.supportwarehamlibrary.org. You can go on there and make a donation or you can mail checks to the Library Foundation, Post Office Box 485, East Wareham 02538. The Wareham Land Trust is offering free walks in the woods with specific programs. You can access the information at wherehamlandtrust.org backslash category backslash events. The registration is still limited due to COVID, but you are able to get outside. On March 30th from 9 to 10, the program is entitled Birding at the Great Neck Audubon Sanctuary. On March 12th, you can learn basic botany at Mark's Cove from 2.30 onwards. On March 20th at the Westgate Preserve, you can learn all about winter bugs, yuck, from one to two. And on March 27th, the Tweedy and Barnes location is hosting Talking About Trees from one to two. Changing gears a little bit, the New Bedford Symphony Orchestra is collaborating with the New Bedford Historical Society in a concert titled Celebrating Black Culture on March 20th. For more information, log on to www.nbsymphony.org. And interestingly enough, last week I talked about, you know, hang up or the week before, you get scam calls, it's the IRS, they're gonna come and arrest you and, you know, all this other stuff. Um, I got four the day after that I made that announcement. The IRS will never, ever, ever ask you for information over the phone. They will not threaten you. So if you're getting these phone calls, hang up. They are scams, okay? A lot of them are saying, oh, you're gonna go to jail. You're not gonna go to jail. You may lose some of your possessions if you don't hang up. It is a scam. It is a terrible time of year for people um, who are afraid of sometimes of our government, but I just want to assure you that the IRS, IRS does not come after people that way. Thank you. Um, I, I, got, I got a call today for the IRS scam. Yep. Going to go to jail? Uh, yeah, some, some sort of, uh, you know. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, these have been going on for a while, uh, so please don't fall for them. <clears throat> uh, by way of announcements, uh, just a reminder that the uh, special town meeting where the East Wareham uh, Hospitality Entertainment Recreation District, as well as a couple of other articles uh, relating to ball fields out at Westfield will be had. Uh, that's still scheduled for Saturday, April 10th uh, on the football field, baseball field, outdoor town meeting. Uh, for noontime. So mark that off on your calendar. Uh, the moderator has gone to great lengths to try to assure a safe outdoor venue for people that will hold enough people. So I, you know, uh, the best way you can thank her is to show up and exercise your right as a citizen legislator and weigh in on these issues, uh, which uh, certainly, uh, you know, you have the opportunity to do so. And just going back, you know, we got complaints about the trash and people say, how could you selectmen inflict this thing upon us, so on and so forth. We didn't inflict anything on anybody. Uh, people showed up at a town meeting and voted on it and exercised their rights as their citizen legislators. We don't spend a dime up here without your say so. So, you know, please pay attention. Uh, I've said ever since I got on this board that we can do a lot more damage to you than the people in Washington can. So pay heed. I bet most of you showed up and voted either way in the presidential election. Well, you should show up and vote for other things that are important, especially the things that are going on right under your nose. Uh, before I go to citizens' comments, I see some people that I think may be here uh, and want to comment on uh, the uh, 61A uh, solar projects and so on and so forth. Once again, we don't have this on the agenda. As I announced last week, 
we've gotten feedback from some of the boards. We're not going to be doing anything with this for the month of March. Uh, we put it off a month the last time uh, to give the people who are interested in exploring the acquisition of the property an opportunity to you know, try to divine what the value is, formulate an offer, talk with the landowner and see if it's realistic to go ahead to try to purchase the property before we go ahead and make a decision. So once again, that's, that's not on the agenda. That's not something that's gonna be decided tonight. We will make it very clear when it is on an agenda. And so I would ask people uh, interested in that topic if they would just hold off for a bit uh, until you know, we, 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 we will announce that it'll be on an upcoming agenda. Don't worry, it'll, and we'll, we'll ask the papers to carry that. Uh, with that in mind, is there anyone who would like to address the board tonight? If you would, we're operating under a different system tonight. Uh, so if there's a way for you, because I'm sitting here as a panelist, we're separated into panelists and attendees before we were all the same and they just turned on the microphones for some people and not others during the meeting. So if there's anyone who would wish to address the board tonight, uh, try to signal me. I see one hand up. I see two. I'm trying to see who the hands are associated with. All right, I got one under Q&A. Uh, Kathy Papalato, has the method of accessing the meeting changed? I would like to be able to speak during citizens' comments. Thank you. Uh, yes, it has. <laughs> I just asked the TV station to allow you to be a panelist and, and move you in sort of from the, from the bullpen of the attendees to the panelists, which is us. So if WCTV would move Kathy Papalato in for us, please. Okay, Kathy, you're there. We need you to one mic and uh, if you would like to appear on TV, we need to see your video. Thank you. Okay, we hear you. Oh. I I didn't have the option of changing my name to Nancy McHale, which is what it is. Sorry about that. That's Peter. okay. It, it, it's like a notary. I, I recognize you in person, so it's not a worry. <laughs> well, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Go ahead. Um, one of, I actually had two questions and don't, don't shoot the messenger, but on the <laughs> 61A question, did you get uh, any kind of a response from um, Borrego or ADM in asking for more clarification about where their parcels are? We can't do a, um, an appraisal until we know what the parcels are. Yeah, I had asked, uh, and I'm sure I'll get a response soon. I had asked the uh, director of assessing to look at the submissions to see if she would be able to provide those answers. Uh, she's going to get back to me on that, but, but we are working on that. Okay, terrific. I appreciate that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say was that I know that uh, Ken Buckland had submitted a, uh, an amendment to the solar bylaws um, and asked that that be put on the warrant for Springtown meeting. So I wanted to stand in support of that article. We have Wareham has had a bullseye on its back recently, and this is an attempt to maybe slow down some of those um, conversions or taking down all of the forest. I know that the, the state is in the process of looking at um, how to rewrite these, our current solar bylaws based on 2014 guidance. So I would ask for the board's support of the article that Ken has submitted. Thank you. Yeah, um, it, th that was kind of strange. Um, he didn't attribute it to anyone in particular. Uh, the way he sent it to us was, because he, he sent it along with two other articles that were at the request of the planning board. So we know mm -hmm. that in that instance, you know, a vote of the planning board was taken. This he sent up and he said, he basically said, some people are interested in doing this. And he did, he did send it along for our consideration. Uh, what I what I did say last week was that I would try to put together uh, an article to create a. I initially conceived it as a solar bylaw study committee. Take a look at it. Uh, what can we do? So on and so forth. And I know you were you were listening to the meeting last week because you did have a follow up question. Um, 
That's not something I wanted to rush to get onto the main warrant for town meeting tonight, but we are tonight simultaneously doing the process for the special town meeting within the annual town meeting. So that will open on March 19th and the warrant will close on March 30th, you know, assuming the board wants to hold a special town meeting and I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, and so given the complexity of it, given the, 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 the different interests that are involved here, uh, both on the preservation side, but also on the town revenue side and everything else that's, you know, part of this whole question of solar and wind power development. La last week before my very eyes, somebody brought up wind turbines and, you know, people don't like those either. So, uh, but yet that's a renewable energy resource that, you know, is part of what's on the table for how we're going to power ourselves going forward. So we're look I'm looking to ask the board to do something for the special town meeting. And, you know, if, if people are look interested in a size limit or a moratorium or things of that nature, those are certainly things that will be up for discussion. Um, I, don't, I would just say that I don't think that those two things are mutually exclusive. I think that you could put this um, bylaw amendment on the warrant and also put on an article to have a, a more comprehensive um, plan. A comprehensive plan is what the, the citizens group has, has in mind anyway. It, in terms of the citizen input, there were two pl planning board members and um, the conservation agent, as well as the conservation chair and myself, as well as Ken Buckland. So there was, you know, interrupt. Uh, a, two of two of my employees met with a citizens group to create a, an article. Is this what I'm being told? I well, yeah, we're not going to get too far down that rabbit hole, but mm -hmm. you know, that's as far as as far as this all goes, uh, I, we are we are uh, voting to put on additional articles tonight. Uh, you know, my request to the board will be to hold off on anything to do with solar and put it on the special town meeting warrant. But you know what? I can ask them that, but I'm just one of four. So they, they can tell me to go pound sand and, and jam whatever they want on the warrant. All it takes is three of them. So if, if that's what they want to do, that's what they do. I can't predict what they will do. Uh, I, I, really can't I really can't predict what this bunch will do. Aren't you one of five? I'm just one of five. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much for your consideration and I appreciate being let into the room. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna go down here and see, uh, let's see, Richard Swenson would like to speak. So let's let Mr. Swenson into the panel. I have a question, should Ms. Pep, um, Ms. McHale be now removed from the panel? That's to Steve. Yeah, I think as, as people pop up, uh, then, they, then they would go back to the attendees. Good evening, Richard. Hi, I'm Mr. Chairman. Thanks for letting me speak. Yep. I wanted to give some background and context to um, the citizens group that Nancy referred to. Um, the Wareham Planning Board has been discussing our solar laws for the last several months. And in early February, we agreed to put together a workshop with re representatives from the Planning Board, the Conservation Commission, the Wareham Land Trust, and the Director of Planning and Development. And the goal was to share thoughts on our current laws around solar and determine if there were opportunities for improvement. We held a initial workshop meeting on the 17th, and it became very evident quickly that everyone felt our current laws were very lax and needed to be updated based on the current state of solar farms in Wareham. As you all know, we have some very large ones now, and there's even more larger ones coming. It was suggested at this workshop that some simple zoning changes around size limits and clear-cutting restrictions could be proposed for the 2021 Springtown meeting if we acted quickly. And we felt that if those changes were enacted, um, the workshop members felt that we would then have time necessary to gather additional public, public, technical, and scientific input. 
and work on a comprehensive solar bylaw article for consideration at the fall 2021 town meeting. And to that end, uh, Director of Planning and Development, uh, Mr. Buckland, proposed a zoning article that has two simple elements. Uh, solar farms would have a 10 acre cap. Our current bylaws have no cap on size, only a three acre minimum. And secondly, solar farms would be restricted to land had already been cleared for at least five years previously. We looked at this as a firewall type article based on the current Falmouth solar bylaws, which are in place and approved by the Massachusetts Attorney General. Um, in regards to the 10 acre cap, I've done some research in the town of Shirley, Massachusetts has a five acre cap in their, in their zoning laws that are dated of May, 2018. This article still allows uh, uh, solar farm development just on a smaller scale, and as opposed to a complete ban or a moratorium. Um, it's my belief that a moratorium would have a much harder time getting through the Attorney General's office. Our workshop met one more time and unanimously agreed to support Director Buckland's proposal. At the February 22nd Wareham Planning Board meeting, Director Buckland shared this proposed article and the Planning Board has scheduled a public hearing for March 22nd to gather public feedback. Director Buckland submitted this article to you, the Board of Selectmen on the 24th and, requesting, and requested consideration for the spring 2021 town meeting warrant, which is being finalized tonight, as you mentioned. Finally, at the previous um, Board of Selectmen meeting, there was discussion around the creation of an alternative energy review committee to examine our solar bylaws. I want you to know I totally support this idea and it is exactly what our workshop intended to do once this article was approved at Springtown meeting. A review committee, however, is a separate issue from this article and each should be evaluated on their own merits. So I'm here tonight to encourage the Board of Selectmen to approve the insertion of this article and thus allow the citizens of Warham to consider the strategy at the spring 2021 town meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your remarks. Uh, let's see, is there, I'm looking at the chat. Mr. Chairman, I'm just a little confused because our, our director of planning community development cannot submit anything without my approval. Um, this is a little shocking and the director of planning community development stressed that this was not his article. So now it's being framed as such. Well, this is something to be discussed. If somebody wants to make a motion to put it on, I would suggest that any further discussion now isn't the time to have it. No, uh, it, but it does lead to me for it to, there needs to be some uh, house cleaning on my end. So well, I apologize to the board that this would be coming forward like this. Well, it is what it is. That's uh, that's for later on in the meeting, just in terms of whether it goes on the warrant. And of course, you know, what happens between you and employees is up to you and we don't need to hear about that either. Uh, let's see, is there anybody else? I'm gonna try to go off. Again, I'm trying to use this new system here and it's kind of weird for me here. Uh, I see a bunch of people listening in. If there's, there is a hand up, hold on. I see two hands up. I click on it and I can't see who it is. Catherine Garofoli. Okay, and yep, I now see what the hands are. They're off to the side. Okay, yes, uh, Catherine, we'll start with her. Richard uh, has to go out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Teitelbaum. <laughs> I appreciate your patience and letting me on. Um, I'm here tonight to make a couple of announcements on behalf of the Onset Bay Center. Uh, so uh, as of Friday, we've opened up early registration for Wareham residents for our half day and full day youth summer programs. That incorporates a full day Onset Bay Explorer program, ages seven to 12 where they're getting basically the greatest experience of all the things that we have to offer, kayaking, paddle boarding, learning to shellfish. Um, we're also gonna have two half day learn to sail programs, one for younger kids and one for teenagers. 
Um, and we're really excited to announce that we are working with Mass Maritime Academy. They are going to work with us to get us top-notch cadets to help lead our sailing program this summer. So we're really thrilled that we have that opportunity to par partner with Mass Maritime. Um, and in the meantime, while we wait for summer, I'm also hiring several positions to help us lead these summer programs. Uh, that includes some ex exploration leaders and some program interns that um, I've submitted to the high school because we're um, looking for some high school applicants to really generate some local um, teenagers to come and work for us. And um, also looking for an intern to help us grow some oysters this summer to be part of our <laughs> shelf education program. Um, so going back to the summer programs I was talking about earlier, um, the registration, as I mentioned, is open for all Wareham residents right now. We have several scholarships to provide to the Wareham community. Um, and so I'm hopeful that people will take advantage of that and they can reach me at 508-999-6363, uh, extension 227. I'd be happy to answer any questions um, about the upcoming summer. And we're gonna have lots of other exploration programs as well um, that include kayak tours for families. We're gonna have an open sail where um, people who don't have previous sailing experience will take for a spin out on our Ode Dea Sailor on Onset Bay. So we're really trying to um, provide as many uh, diverse programs as possible to really get people outside and having fun in Onset. So I just wanted to let the board know that this is happening right now. And we're really excited to uh, start planning again for another big launch here. <laughs> great, well, thank you very much. Absolutely, have a great everything day. you're doing down there. And you know, as the pandemic eases, Certainly, I hope that a lot more people can get involved and, and participate and make your jobs easier, too, so that you're thinking about this, the instruction and, you know, the, the knowledge that you're imparting instead of worrying about whether, you know, kids are wearing masks and keeping six feet apart and all that fun stuff. So, well, you know, I feel like it's still valuable to have that in mind in terms of safety and crowd control and making sure we're providing quality programs. We have a really robust COVID plan in place that we're going to um, train our staff on thoroughly so that they have a question that what we're doing is keeping everybody safe. Great, thank you very much. Have a great night. You too. Okay, I believe there was a question, uh, Wareham Slaving, I'm assuming that's Mrs. Slavin, so if we could let her in. Oh, there we go, good evening. Oh, is she there? She's got to turn on her microphone. Alan just yelled at me. My mic's on now. Yep, you're good. Okay. You made a plea for citizens to come to town meeting so they can have a say in what's happening with our government. I'm just making a request that you submit. Um, you allow all the articles coming before you to be placed on warrant so that the citizens can have a say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll give it a little bit longer. If anybody else wants to wave a hand at me, I'll wait about 15 seconds. So now that I finally figured out where I have to look for the hand. And otherwise we will jump down to the public hearing that's on for 7.15. Okay, seeing none, let's uh, commence with the public hearing on the application from DJP Corp, DBA, the Jug Shop, 221 Main Street, Wareham, for a change of location from 221 Main Street, Wareham, to 291, 2991 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham. Can we have a motion to open the hearing? Move that we open the hearing for the application from DJP. P Corp DBA, the Jug Shop, 221 Main Street, Wareham, for a change of location from 221 Main Street, Wareham, to 299, 2991 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, under Chapter 138 of Mass General Laws. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Judy, seconded by Patrick. 
Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. Judy. Yes. Myself. Yes. Five zero zero. The hearing is now open. Uh, I will turn it over to the applicant. That you have you have that on the uh, agenda in front of you. Do you, Judy? Uh. I, I did not actually print that page out. It's Mr. Um, Patel, I believe. I believe we have a couple of Patels who are representing different interests here. So I think we need to make sure we get the right Patel up to, to speak about the application. Uh, will, the, will the Patel who is the applicant uh, please raise their hand and okay, that would be Stipen Kumar Patel. So if we could acknowledge him. We'll wait for him to turn on his mic and appear and. Yes, I've got it. I've got it up in front of me and he is indeed the correct, the, the correct person. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> oh, you want to move your liquor store? Yeah. Okay. And this is simply a transfer of location. There's gonna be no change in the corporate structure? Nope. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward what you're looking to do here. So I will turn it over to questions uh, from the board first. Alan? Okay. No questions. Patrick? Um, I, I have a question. He, he owns the one at CVS Plaza too, right? Correct. Yep. So mm -hmm. you have two on, on Main mean, Street. No, I, I don't own that. My, my dad and my uncle owns, I mean, my uncle owns that one. Well, I, I, I okay. Sorry. Uh, all right. I manage that one. You manage it. Okay. I knew there was something, some connection there. Okay. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Any questions for the applicant? Um, I'll, I'll wait. I will wait until um, after we have. Will there be public comment or no public comment? Or oh yeah, it's a public hearing, and and we're going to. We also received uh, petitions from people that uh, I'm going to ask the board to take administrative notice of as part of the hearing. Uh, but for now, I just did, I'm just going. I'm just giving everybody an opportunity to ask Mr. Patel questions if they have any. So um, I will pass at this time, point in time. Yep. Thank you, Judy. No, thank you. I have no questions of Mr. Patel. I don't have any questions myself. Uh, before I turn it over to public comments, however, uh, we have to acknowledge, and I'm gonna ask for a motion for the board to take administrative notice of the fact that we did receive a petition from the liquor locker uh, with 102 signatories, uh, all claiming, of course, we don't verify these things in this instance, but they're all claimed to be residents of the town of Wareham who are opposed to the move. We received another petition from the Onset Village Market containing 25 signatures with substantially the same language in opposition to the move. So I would ask the board for a motion to take administrative notice of, so move. These, uh, of these uh, petitions that have been submitted to us so that they are part of the hearing record. You have a motion from Patrick and a second from me. I do, okay. Uh, is there any discussion about these? Does anybody want to say anything about them or do we just want to move on with the vote? Move on. No, I think we've all okay. looked at them. Roll call vote, Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. Judy. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, now comes the portion of the hearing where I'm going to ask anybody who is in support of Mr. Patel's application to move his liquor store from 221 Main Street <laughs> to 2991 Cranberry Highway. Uh, so please raise your hand if you would like to speak in favor of this move. <sighs> Okay, I see there's a Matthew Porter with his hand up. 
if we could uh, put him into the chat or, or actually put him into the, the room with us, if you will. Are you going to ask the speakers if they're citizens? Yep. If the residents? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Hey, uh, good evening, board. Um, my hand had actually been raised prior to. I'm the attorney of record. I was trying to get the board's attention to give. Ah, a okay. Uh, but I, I realized that ship has sailed. <laughs> yep. Um, so you know, certainly we're here representing Dipin Kumar. Uh, the move itself is fairly self-explanatory, uh, but just a couple of things to point out. Uh, certainly, we believe it'll benefit not only Mr. Patel's business, uh, but it will be in the best interest of the of the <coughs> parking uh, that he currently has. It'll be a new build-out, larger store, uh, be able to offer a you know, greater selection of wine, craft beers. Also, uh, with it being located within that plaza, certainly the convenience uh, for the members of town. Um, but with that, I, I realize that the, the presentation aspect of it has already passed. Um, so we'll, we'll feel free to move forward. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'll go back and see if anybody else has their hand raised in support of the move. Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna ask in the other direction. Is there anyone who would like to state their opposition to the board? And if so, please raise your hand and we will acknowledge you one at a time and you can have your say. Uh, yes, I see uh, Suhas Patel has, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, uh, has the hand raised, so let's please let uh, this person into the meeting. Good evening. Hi, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. The first question uh, I've been reminded to ask is, uh, is if you're a resident of the town. No, I am not. I'm the manager of Liquor Locker. Okay, then I would ask, uh, I would ask leave of the board to let you speak, given that you have a commercial interest, but that you're not uh, a resident. If, so uh, moved. Any, if any members have a problem with that, please let me know. I'll second Mr. Tropiano's motion to let him speak. Okay, so we have a motion to allow you to speak by Patrick, seconded by Judy, roll call vote. Alan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, go ahead, please address the board. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, yeah, like I said, my name is Suhas Patel. I'm the manager of Liquor Locker. Um, uh, we personally believe it's not a good move because within five minutes of that location, there are already three existing liquor stores. There is Mayflower Liquors, and down the street is our store, Liquor Locker, and there's Depot Liquors. So probably within five to six minutes, there are three liquor stores that already existed, and this show would be the fourth one. I, we don't necessarily see any public need for another business to come in. It um, it creates not not the sake of talk, you know competition. It just we don't see a public need, and we ask a lot of our customers. We do a little survey, which we turn into the town of Hall, and majority of the customers says, yeah, it doesn't really make sense to have another liquor store, especially it's literally behind our location, so we don't see a public need for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for the board for Mr. Patel? Okay, seeing none, I will go back. Thank you, Mr. Patel. I will go back. I don't see anybody else with their hand raised. Um, is there anything further that the board wishes to inquire about? If not, then let's have a motion to close the public hearing. Before I make that motion. Okay, um, sorry, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. before I make that motion, I just want to indicate that all of the paperwork is in order. So. All right. Thank you. You can motion it. Patrick. So moved. I'll second the motion to close the hearing. Okay, we have a motion before us to close the public hearing. Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Jim, you're with us? You, you seem kind of... We still have to 
Can we still have discussion? Oh yeah, yep. we discuss afterwards. The board? Public input time is over with. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Judy. Yes. Myself. Yes. Okay. The public uh, portion of the hearing is now closed, and now we can deliberate amongst ourselves uh, on the uh, application and go ahead and decide the question here. Uh, start off with Patrick. Okay. So um, I'm not in favor of this move. Um, it, uh, it causes a problem with the other uh, places that are nearby. Liquor Locker, I happen to know, um, is um, very, uh, probably doesn't do very well uh, at all. I mean, they're doing, they're, they're surviving, but I know, I know that they have a difficult time. Mayflower Liquors, uh, the Depot Liquor Store, uh, that's three, like he says, within a very short distance. And as you know, I was not in favor of Liquors and more out in, uh, you know, West Wareham, because they were too, putting too much tax on uh, Peppins and Anchor and all those guys. Uh, so I, the, the separation where it is now um, is, is, is fine. I mean, I have no problem with it being where it is, but I don't, I don't want to put that right in the plaza because basically you're, you're, you're cutting off those other guys. You're adding another, another bit of competition to them. And especially now during COVID, where everybody's struggling. I mean, to add another, another person in the mix in there, I mean, if things were booming, you might say, well, maybe there's a need for it. But in this case, I don't believe there's a need for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alan, any remarks? No, it'll be consistent with basically when we had the wines and more, liquors and more. Um, it's a very simple thing. I've been in business for years. Is a thing called restraint of trade. I don't believe we have the right to sit and restrict where people are located and all as far as this type of business. There are certain things we have rights for, which in our zoning laws or our bylaws. In this particular case here, we do not. I think we're getting ourselves in trouble if we start to go past our rights. Thank you. Well, I think we should get an answer from no. council about that because I well, don't believe that's the case. No, no, no. I think he's expressing an opinion. He's not reading us law, so I don't think we have to go to council on this. Uh, let's see, Jim. Um, I, I look at, you know, is there a public need for, for um, an, another um, liquor establishment within that area? And, um, you know, it, it, it seems like there's plenty of them around there. And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's where I kind of how I'm kind of looking at it, and that's the only way I really should look at it, if, if I have any um, concerns at all. And so um, that's, that's where my train of thought is at this point in time. Um, I, I don't know which way I'll go. I'm just saying that, um, is there a public need? So thank you. Yeah. Uh, Judy. Yes, thank you. Um, I believe that all businessmen have the right to make a decision about where they have their business and what their business is. And I would um, leave it at that. Okay. Uh, I'm, for myself, I, I'm not insensitive to the concerns of other liquor store owners in the area uh, where Mr. Patel is proposing to move his, his shop. I, I think the issue is though, uh, as the other Mr. Patel told us, well, you know, we've got, you know, three or four liquor stores within five minutes. Uh, if you look at where the location currently is for the jug shop, uh, you could pretty much say the same thing. You've got Wareham Liquors up the street. You've got uh, what's a faces that's out near Cremisa. Uh, and Sullivan's. Yeah, Sullivan's. You got Sullivan's out there. You've got the, the one at the crossing, and I suppose if you drove fast enough and hit the lights, you could get there in five minutes. You got the one next door to the crossing. So it's kind of a thing where no matter where anybody wants to go, uh, they're gonna be near somebody else. We're, we're, you know, unless you put it the other side of Route 25 and nobody's clamoring for us to put liquor stores out there just yet, uh, you know, you're gonna be near somebody else if you move. I think it's just a constant uh, uh, sort of a, a combination of the fact that we have what 13 package stores or something like that in town and but they're all 
you know, located in one half of the town, which is the, the area that's south of 495 and 25. So th there's no way they can move without impacting somebody. So that, that brings you down to the public need thing. What was resonated with me was that Mr. Patel told us he was gonna have a larger store with more variety. And, uh, you know, in today's market, you know, it, it, it's not enough to have Budweiser, Schlitz and, uh, you know, Coors on tap. You know, especially as people get into the craft beers, they get into the wines and all this, that, and the other thing. Uh, they're very savvy consumers now. They go online, they read reviews, they want to go try a certain brand of wine or something from, you know, this valley in France or that place in Argentina. And, you know, the bigger the store is, the more consumer choice they have. So I think that in that regard, the, the public need might be fulfilled with a move. So those are just my thoughts. I have one more thing. I'd like to add one more thing problem is, and uh, I think we're setting a precedent as well, is now what do we do with the marijuana places that want to move, that want to go someplace near another marijuana facility? Why, why, why should they not be allowed to move? Why couldn't they go anywhere they want? You know what I mean? So now we're, 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 we're setting a precedent, in my opinion, um, when we say, okay, we're not going to use our rights, which it is, and I think we should ask council this, it's our right to decide where they go and what the need is. And, uh, and thank God it is because uh, otherwise you, know, you could have seven people on top of each other and not serve the public good at all. Just saying, just yeah. remember this, when something else comes up, you gotta be consistent. Well, we won't be making that decision. If somebody wants to change the structure, especially of the retail marijuana in town, they're gonna have to go to town meetings. So that'll, go, that'll blow right past us to a higher authority. Uh, so I think there's a distinction there, but, but, I, but you know, I am mindful of what you're saying here, Patrick. Anything else? I'd like to make a motion. Okay, go ahead. I move the Board of Selectmen grant the application from DJP Corp DBA, the Jug Shop, 221 Main Street, Wareham for a change of location from 221 Main Street, Wareham to 2991 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, under the provisions of chapter 138 of Massachusetts general law. Thank you. Subject to, uh, we need, we got to make that subject to uh, uh, getting the final plan and all that or the layout of the place and all that, because we're required to have all that. You know that, right? That was, that was in there, right? They was it in there? I didn't see it. Yes, sir. It was. Oh, it was? All, okay. all of the paperwork is in. All right. If it's in there, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Second. Okay. Motion by Judy, seconded by Alan. Any more discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Alan? Yes. Patrick? No. Jim? No. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes, it carries three to two. Uh, the paperwork has to be signed, Mr. Patel. Uh, give us a couple of days to get that done, and the office will get a hold <coughs> to make an appointment to pick it up. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for the hearing. These, you know, these... These aren't easy decisions, as you see. We don't, we're not always unanimous on them. And, you know, the, the two people who voted against it had pretty good reasons to vote the way they did, too. Thank you very much. May I make a suggestion, sir, that we go to 9C and hear from the director of assessing? Uh, she is actually, I have spoken with the town administrator. Oh. Uh, he is actually looking to put these on the special town meeting warrant. So uh, in that instance, uh, I spoke with, with Jackie and said, would you like to come in at a future date? So we're gonna schedule her in another week or two. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, board comments, let's go back to those. Anybody wanna talk? <laughs> Alan. Real quick, uh, the South Coast Hospital, South Coast Health Group, which had uh, COVID shots last week, will only have COVID shots first time this Saturday only due to lack of supply. Anyone who is scheduled for a second shot at any one of their three facilities will go ahead and go at the date and time that they were given. There'll be shots for that starting next week on Monday, uh, depending on what happens with, of course, Johnson & Johnson and everything else going on. Uh, they plan to hope to be back open running a full week schedule. We should have answers by that by mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday. Again, please do not call the YMCA if you're trying to get into the Gleason. The Y is strictly a facility that's provided for South Coast Health. Uh, South Coast Health basically, again, 
books the appointments through my chat, notifies you to go ahead and apply. Uh, there is a hotline number at South Coast Hospitals on their website if you do want to speak to someone, but the only way you're going to get an appointment is through the my chat system right now. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Patrick. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, you know, I was supposed to go to a, um, to a, a, a look at the school today, uh, the new school, and I didn't get to go, but lo and behold, they uh, actually did a video while they were going around. So I got to watch it <laughs> while, while it was going on. So it's kind of cool. Uh, the, you, it's really fun to see uh, how far they have gotten and, uh, you know, all the different changes that happen every time they do the, I think they, we, they do these like once a month. And uh, the changes are incredible as it goes along. I mean, now you're really starting to see, uh, you know, what what stuff is. You know what I mean? You, you know, this is the gym. You know, this is the cafeteria. You know, this is the kitchen. You know that these are the offices for this and, you know, the different rooms and stuff. So it's really kind of cool. So I would suggest that I know they posted it on Facebook. Uh, and if anybody wants to uh, actually see how the school's coming, and what it looks like, um, you tune into Facebook and, and get a look at it. It takes a bit. It's about an hour plus. Uh, a matter of fact, I think it's closer to like an hour and a half. But uh, it's it's a good good thing to take in. Uh, and since uh, everybody out there is spending a lot of money to have this, it might be nice to see what's going on. You know. Yep. All right. Good point, uh, Jim. Yes. Um... I had spoken with um, the chair earlier um, regarding the uh, um, the Trava um, vote we took last week. I believe on the agenda it was supposed to be for um, authorization to um, enter into negotiations for a host community agreement not to approve a host community agreement. So I think we erred in our, our vote, um, at least from watching the, um, because we, I think we voted to approve. Well, I think, previously, I think it went on the agenda um, incorrectly, I think is what happened, Jim. I think we had actually previous, I, I gotta go back and check this before we do anything. You gotta look at the I video. I think what happened was back in January, we did vote to have negotiations and I think it went on the agenda last week incorrectly. Uh, it may be that we need to do an affirm, uh, confirmatory vote if that's the case. But let me look into it first and I'll get, I'll oh, get yeah, back. Yeah, so, so let me finish here. Because what we were provided for information was their um, business plan, not a host community agreement to vote on. So I, I'm not against it. I, I just don't, you know, I, I can't approve something I haven't seen. So, um, I just wanted to bring that to your attentions. Yep. Uh, your attention, and uh, if you take a look at it, and, and again, I'm not against it. Just, you know, um, negotiate it, and then bring it back and say this is what they've um, proposed, and we've agreed to, and and then we can authorize something that's actually been negotiated. Yeah. I'm but looking at you. this. I just made a note to myself, and it says, "Look at what was presented versus what was voted." So I'll take a look. See. Yeah, I, I, I watched the I watched the video again. Um, yeah. So thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Judy. Anything? Yes, um, I had asked you earlier today to do something, and we forgot to do it. Um, Nan Evans oh, yes. died earlier this week. Nan Evans was a very important part of the Charter Review Committee, and in her professional career, she was a champion of equity and equality. And I would like to suggest that we have a moment of silence. This lady died with grace and with, um, she had an honorable service to this town as did her family. So Thank I'd you. ask for that moment of silence. Yes. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, jumping down, COVID-19 update. Anything from the town administrator on this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there was only 28 new cases, but unfortunately we did have another one more death last week. So 
you know, there, we still have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, Further in that regard, I'm looking to take meetings back live fairly soon. Uh, so <laughs> bear in mind. Not happening. Not happening. Not happening. No. So you guys are all um, getting shots. Doesn't matter. You know, yeah, I haven't been able to, I haven't even tried, but um, just, just a quick uh, side here. Um, you know, since we've been wearing masks and social distancing, um, I'd knock on wood, I shouldn't say it. I haven't had a cold in a year. You know, so I, I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do with it. <laughs> no, I think that's right. And you know what? This makes, this kind of uh, broaches the point for like next year to wear one anyway while you're uh, during the winter so you don't get the flu or anything, right? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I mean, you know, most of you know, I spend a lot of time in Quincy, which has a large Asian population and where, you know, China and Asia are typically the places where the, where the flu begins. It's always interesting in the winter time to see, you know, you'll go in the supermarket and half the people who appear to be of Asian descent are wearing the masks. And, you know, but before it was always, you know, I always thought in the back of my mind, well, gee, maybe that's a bit of an overreaction. I don't know why they're doing that. Turns out they were a hell of a lot smarter than me. So uh, I think that's a good thing to follow. Uh, if you're vulnerable to the flu, uh, yeah. I never get the flu. It doesn't really bother me. But if you're vulnerable to it, this will protect against that too. So I think we've learned some things here. I don't think, I don't mind wearing them at all. I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah. Can I make a comment from the Board of Health? I've been attending their meetings. Um, it, in their last meeting, they noticed that the trend of the number of cases was going down, but they, all of them believe that we should continue with the social distancing, we should continue with the masks, we should continue to be extremely careful. Right. Um, so I'm just, that would be my liaison report for the Board of Health, but that is their message. Don't don't do a Texas then makes I, perfect Texas, sense. you know, they're opening everything up. It's, it's, it's an asking for trouble in their opinion. Yep. I agree. Anything else, Derek? Nope. That's uh, just uh, wearing a mask and the discovery of using soap while washing your hands has made a big difference. So <laughs> did this earlier, remember? <laughs> God has had to teach you what to do. Okay, we understand. Interesting mask. <laughs> okay, trash disposal update. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the the barrels should, will be delivered um, so to municipal maintenance as a staging area to be delivered soon. Uh, I've uh, we've received at least a hundred and twenty opt out applications that we've approved. Uh, about four that have not been approved. Some of them where somebody said, uh, wrote, I have a different hauler and want to use them. So I'm opting out. Well, that's, you know, that's not an, an opt out. Um, but most, you know, we're basically at, uh, you know, 90 plus percent of approval, including the senior. We've, uh, we've gone through a lot of senior as well, senior abatement, which has been great and a lot of seasonal. So uh, it's been working well. Those are time consuming. Uh, you know, those all have to be done by by hand, but we should have a, a finalized list going to ABC and we'll continue to receive these and, and go through them. Um, you know, I think uh, I was running through a pile of those uh, Selectman Slavin was talking about last week. And I, I think he was uh, he was almost a little confused at who is this nice guy actually approving things. So. <laughs> <laughs> Way too easy. It's rare that he gives money back, folks. Very rare. Uh, no, it's it's going well, and we actually the the interesting thing is right now we just hit a little over two thousand transfer station only which uh, Selectman Muniz will remember, that was kind of right in the wheelhouse of what we, we had estimated, which, uh, you know, that's it's actually kind of nice to see that, so. You know, I, I'd like to say one thing, if I can. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things, we, we make fun of Derek sometimes about, you know, his cheapness, but, you know, there's not, I've not met a town administrator, and as you know, I've been around here for a bunch, okay? I've never met a guy that cares more about the community that he works in 
or in fact uh, cares about uh, the, the amount of money they spend, the amount of money that the government puts on people or anything else. So he's just as cheap with the money that he gets as well as being cheap with your money. Everybody should understand that. That guy is top shelf. Uh, you know, I'm just, I just, I, you never get enough of this, Derek, and you deserve it. Yeah. Thank you, Selectman Trumpiano. I appreciate that. I really that was a great lead into his contract negotiations are going to be on the agenda soon. <laughs> <laughs> Another 20% increase. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just one comment. Yeah, yeah. Before. There goes our negotiating position. Uh, yeah. Alan. Yeah, I just, again, you know, we've been thanking Jim all along for the work on the <laughs> transfer station. It never would have happened without his work on that. We never would have got to that point. Uh, again, you know, I have to thank Derek as well as Patrick did. I've had no phone calls, no complaints, nothing at all in the last five days. And we've awesome. all had hundreds of calls and emails, et cetera, before that. Uh, the program has really been put together as best as possible. We've addressed the needs of, uh, we never address everybody's needs, but we've addressed a su substantial majority of the people's needs and it's been a very fair and equitable piece. And again, we should thank everybody involved with us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Do we lose Jim? Yeah, yeah I think we, I can't, can't see him anymore. Hold on. I think we lost them. Did Come they out. move them out into the outer harbor? <laughs> um, well, that's what I'm checking. I'm checking the outer harbor right now. To see, to see that's a good way to put it, the outer harbor. Yeah, the poor guy. Okay, well, I'll take, I'll take note of the fact that Mr. Manice departed the room at 8 o'clock, I think. He might be he might be having a computer issue here. Yeah, uh, I'll text him and see what's going on. Uh so we don't have the, the presentation from the director of assessing. So we'll go down to D. Uh, we need the confirmatory vote to approve the collective bargaining agreement that we already authorized in executive session. State law requires us to do it again in open sessions. So that's what we're yep. doing. I so move. move. Okay, go ahead. You read it. I move to approve the collective bargaining agreement with Wareham Police Sergeants as previously discussed in executive session. Second. Okay, motion to. Uh, Confirm the agreement by Judy, seconded by Patrick. Roll call vote. Alan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Uh, Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, four zero zero on that one. And let's see. Appointment of town council. I'm going to wait a minute to see if uh, Jim would like to come back and weigh in on this one. Okay. You know what? <clears throat> and he should be around for the votes. As I just texted him to see what he says. But let's go down to uh, the discussion and vote on process for calling the special town meeting. I'm going to have to drag that up. I got it right here. If you want me to. Yeah, it'll take me two seconds. Okay. Once I get past all these signatures. I could put my cat mask back on. Do that. <laughs> I'm gonna sing and dance too? No. Okay. Why is all this not right here? There we go. Okay, and this is going to be in the form of what I hope will be a motion here. Uh, Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen, 54 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass 02571. Process for calling a special town meeting within spring annual town meeting for April 26, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021, Board of Selectmen establish all dates for completion of a warrant for the special town meeting. That's what I'm asking the board to authorize tonight. Tuesday, March 9th, 2021, Board of Selectmen vote to hold the special town meeting on April 26, 2021, and to provide notice thereof on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. This is under Wareham Home Rule Charter, Section 2-4A and C, and to open the warrant effective Friday, March 19th, that's according to the Home Rule Charter at 2-4C, which is 10 days notice before the warrant closes. Wednesday, March 10th, 2021, last day to post upon 
town's principal bulletin board and the town website notice of intention of board of selectmen to call the special town meeting for April 26, 2021 and to post the March 19th, 2021 opening and March 30th, 2021 closing dates of the warrant. This is under Wareham Home Rule Charter 2-4C, 24 hours after voting the date the warrant opens. Monday, March 30th, 2021, last day for submission of articles and or petitions to be inserted in the warrant. This is under Wareham Home Rule Charter Section 2-4C, 10 days or more after the warrant opens. Tuesday, March 30th, 2021, Board of Selectmen officially closed the warrant. This is also under Wareham Home Rule Charter Section 2-4C, 10 days or more after the warrant opens. Friday, April 2nd, 2021, last day to post the special town meeting warrant upon the town's principal bulletin board and the town website and to deliver a copy of the warrant to the town moderator and to the chairman of the finance committee. This is under Wareham Home Rule Charter Section 2-4D, uh, special town meeting warrant to be delivered at least 21 calendar mm -hmm. days before the commencement date of such meeting. And then finally, Tuesday, April 26th, 2021, commencement of special town meeting. So, so those are the dates. So moved. We have a motion to adopt the process. Second. second. Third. Okay. <laughs> there was a second? Yes. Uh, it was a third even. It was a third. Second. Okay. Uh, second by Patrick, apparently, and a third by Alan. Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Judy. Yes. I still don't see Jim. I'm going to check the waiting room and make sure he's not hiding there. No. no, this is weird. Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to get him back in, sending him the uh, link and such. So he is, he is adamantly trying to get back in. Okay, he is. Okay. Uh, wait one second, I guess. May I do some motions on um, minutes then? Well, uh, you know, I'll just call for the vote and I'll ask him if he wants me to reopen to revote because it's the same meeting. We can do it uh, if he's interested. Yeah, uh, I'll call for the vote on the uh, process now. Alan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. That's 400. Yeah, go ahead with minutes. Okay. I move that we approve the minutes of the July 21st, 2020 meeting. All were present as well as the September 1st, 2020, where all were present. Second. Okay, motion to approve minutes by Judy, seconded by Patrick, roll call vote, Alan. Um, I think for some reason, Judy cut off the first one. Could you just repeat the dates, Judy? I'm sorry. Certainly, July 21st, 2020, and September 1st, 2020, and all members were present for both. Thank you, yes. Okay, Patrick. Patrick, just uh, sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, Judy. Yes. Myself. Yes. Four zero zero. Uh, we still don't have Jim, so why don't we jump down to uh, town administrator's report? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I really don't don't have anything else for you, so I. We're well, we're going to on reports. Alan, you can kill some time tonight. There really isn't much of anything, unfortunately. Uh, all we have is the uh, housing choice bill that came through that for the governor wanted and got signed. Um, I basically, I think Jim was also in the, monitored the meeting as well today from the state house that we were on. Uh, there's a large amount of issues as far as zoning, obviously. Uh, where the going from two thirds to a simple majority. Uh, there's even items such as two communities can work together to share revenue, which has never happened before. Uh, there's also things if you're an MBTA community, which people I don't think realize Warham is, even though our assessment is is netted out by I, I believe and Derek can confirm our GATRA charges, but we are part of the you know the MBA com community, so they have a thing called a. Uh, uh, basically a bill to write as far as affordable housing or housing within, a, I think, three quarters of a mile of an MBTA station, et cetera. If you don't comply with these rules, you then can't apply for mass works grants, et cetera. Uh, there's certain types of uh, cluster buildings they're going to allow. 
and it, you have to go through all of it. So I got a hold of Ken because I wasn't sure whether or not he had, you know, tuned into the meeting as well. I think I may have messed up and not forwarded him the information on this from last week. So he went through and downloaded the bill. And I think I also copied Mr. Sullivan, as I usually do, and Ken about this. And Ken proceeded to break the pieces out. So we were basically forwarded information to the moderator, to the town council, you know, as necessary, besides the board and everything on these things, because they will affect our town meetings coming up now as well. And there's quite a bit of stuff that has to be gone through. Uh, it's very encompassing, Bill. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Patrick, any liaising? No, I kind of did it already. All right, Judy. I kinda, By the way, I just want to say one thing if I can. Go ahead. The reason why I didn't make the thing today is because I have a huge gout flare up and I can't walk. I can't even get highly get to the john, so that's why I didn't get there. It wasn't for any other reason. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the invitation originally came to us, but then they said, wait a minute, that was just supposed to go to Patrick as a member of the school building committee. It was interesting. They, they wouldn't let in any of the rest of us come for insurance reasons. So, uh, but, they, but while we're on that topic, they did say if the board wanted to, they could set up a tour for us. So if, if people want to go, let me know and uh, we'll arrange it with uh, the school building committee. Uh, Jim, you're back, sort of. Yeah, go, all right, good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I might have an unstable uh, connection. They're asking about my, my video, and I can see myself. I don't know if you can see me. We can see you now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that was the other connection. They had to swap me over again from the link that Derek sent me. Okay. Um, they put me in the waiting room again so I, I guess it's my link it's been kind of unstable so i had missed a lot of what uh mr sullivan was saying related to the um recycling and the, the solid waste um but I, I caught parts of it and uh, so just continue on no sense in okay i can well, watch it on tv tomorrow yep we did we did confirm the uh, collective bargaining agreement with I the sergeants again. um and the other vote we took was uh, for the uh, process for calling the special town meeting. So those were the only votes we took. Uh, we, 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 I tried to hold off so we could get to the uh, warrant articles uh, because we've got a couple of things to do there. Uh, so shifting gears on that, uh, Jim and I talked quite a bit today about article 14 which is the update to the FEMA floodplain bylaw. And, you know, at Jim's sort of urging, prodding, whatever you want to call it, yesterday the director of planning managed to get a uh, walk back some of the language, if you will, or allowed us to put in language uh, regarding uh, variances in certain zones and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But the two of us believe that there is some more work that should be done with this with the state because they basically sent out a boilerplate kind of form. Uh, Jim and I would like to take the time to go through it with council and come back and maybe have some more back and forth with the state. The concern here is uh, to the extent that the federal and state governments would allow more to go on on our coastline than what our existing law already does. And I think I, you know, Jim can jump in, uh, it, you know, if I mischaracterize it, but I think our concerns are we don't, if we don't have to do that, then let's take the time, let's put this on the special warrant instead and get it done right, rather than, you know, have a bunch of people say, oh, but wait a minute, you passed this thing, now I can put up my, you know, 52 room mansion on the sand mm -hmm. all of a sudden or something like that. So that's kind of the concern here. So what I would ask for, uh, is a motion to take motion to remove item 14, the update to the FEMA floodplain bylaw off the spring 2021 annual town meeting warrant. Second. And just, Alan had a question. Uh, all I want to just make sure is we all know we have until the beginning of July. Yeah. We just have to get it done by then because if we don't, then we have a real problem. Right. And just, and, and we also discussed, 
you know, you, you get lumpers and splitters. And this is kind of a lumper because one has to do with Article 2, Section 222, yep. and the other is Article 4. So they, they put them both together and like, so you, you got to vote for both and not one unless you want to, you know, ask to divide it or, or split it on um, town meeting floor. So, you know, it would be better to get it um, ironed out beforehand and um, than not. And if you want to present it as one article, uh, otherwise I have concerns and, and we discussed this last time too. And everybody's in favor of the, the maps and, and what is that article, article two, section 222 not a question about that whatsoever. It's the article four section and, and those changes in there. And um, so anyhow, thank you. Yep. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to pull this off for the time being. Uh, roll call vote, Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Uh, Jim. Yes. Judy. Yes. Myself. Yes, five zero zero. So that will come off, and we will ask uh, the director of planning and assessment to resubmit. And you know, per, perhaps uh, Jim's way of doing it in two separate stages is is the better way to go. So we'll we'll convey that along as well. The other addition to the warrant that that we had found. This is uh, something Judy picked up on uh, that we omitted from that had been before us from prior town meetings, but we didn't take it up because it wasn't financial in nature, was the town meeting endorsement of the 2020 master plan. Uh, you know, I know uh, Mr. Swenson and others put a ton of work into this and it, it's, it's time we, uh, we got this thing uh, before the, the town meeting body and had them weigh in and endorse it. I think that's sort of the, the frosting on the, the master plan cake. And I think we should get that done. So I would move that we that. that we place the town meeting endorsement of the 2020 master plan on the warrant for the 2021 spring annual town meeting. Second. Okay, motion to put that on the warrant by Judy, seconded by Alan. Uh, roll call vote, Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Uh, Jim. Did we lose Jim again? No. Oh, he might be frozen. Looks like he he's, frozen. Yes. he's frozen. Uh -huh. I'm got a yes out of him. Uh, yes. Judy. Myself, yes. Okay, we had two articles come in today from Community Preservation. Uh, one is the annual allocation of the fund reserves, which requires 10% of the total taxation plus state receipts uh, that we get from Community Preservation Act. Uh, there are three areas that 10% at least has to go into. Uh, those are open space and recreation, historic preservation and affordable housing. Uh, they've come in and also 5% for administrative uh, costs. Uh, they've come in at 65,000 for administrative costs, which is 5% of the total and 130,000 for each, which I described earlier. So can we have a vote to put that on the warrant? This is a, a routine article. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Judy, seconded by Alan. Roll call vote, Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, Judy. Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, so that's five zero zero. Uh, there's also a request from Community Preservation uh, for $830,000 in funding to go to the Littleton Drive uh, affordable housing uh, development off of Swiss Beach Road. Uh, so they've, they've asked us to put that on the warrant as well. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Judy, second by? Alan. Alan, any discussion? Roll call vote. Alan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. Five zero zero on that. Uh, if anybody wants to, uh, we can talk about the article that doesn't 
the orphan article, if you will, for the, the 10 acre thing. Uh, if somebody wants to bring that up. Um, I'll bring that up. And, and um, I, I, you know, I, I believe in seeing we have for the charter expert on the um, board, um, the directors can submit directly um, to the selectmen for articles. And I'm not trying to get in between anybody's positions or I don't know what the internal mixes are here. So, um, and you know, I, I, had, I, I had suggested that, you know, it might be a good idea for them to do it as a citizen's petition, but it's their choice on what they wanted to do. Uh, if it was a citizen's thing and it was a group and, it, and, and as Mr. Slavin correctly stated, uh, Mr. Swenson had brought it up and they kind of put together the group uh, um, at the planning board meeting and, um, you know, two from the planning board, one being Mr. Buckland, one being Mr. Swenson. No, would Mike King on it too, maybe? I can't, I don't Mike, remember. Mike King was and on then, it. Um, and then uh, two from CONCOM. Yeah. And so um, this was a recommendation from that group overall. So, uh, you know, um, again, I, I don't know what the internal, internal, um, um, workings are between the directors and the town administrator, but I thought that directors could direct, could actually submit um, articles. Oh. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Won't be the uh, first I see time somebody with a hand up, so Derek? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this group was established by the planning board, which means I was subject to open meeting. There's no minutes. There was no agendas. So it was a working group. They established it as a planning board group. This is not. This is not a working group. Nope. Well, so, I mean, listen, we can, we, you know, uh, we can parse this, and I think, you know, some of us could come down on the side of whether this was a subcommittee, and, and somebody else might say it's a working group. Uh, again. You know what I asked the board was was for its indulgence to give me the time to try to work. Uh, on, you know, the uh, the study group, which I think is important going forward. Uh, you know, this I, I think I, I think this is you know something that certainly could come back uh, as a planning board article. It could come back as an article requested from the director of planning directly, but that wasn't how it was really forwarded to us. I think to avoid any issues, we might be better off waiting here. But I'll let Patrick go because he's been wagging his finger at me. I'm wagging. All right, so uh, I, I did a little homework for you, and uh, it takes 2.5 acres per mig, a solar field mig. So uh, at 2.5 acres per mig, you could get four, basically four megs. What is it? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four megs onto a 10-acre site. Uh, the problem you have here is that the way the thing is, so the way we're talking about doing this, is what would keep somebody from taking a 28 a 20 acre parcel, subdividing it in half to two parcels, and then putting one on each of the 10, 10, 10 pieces? You know what I'm you, you get what I'm saying? They could easily manipulate the system because it hasn't been thought through properly, in my opinion. All right. Now, I think we need a solar, a comprehensive mm -hmm. solar bylaw, uh, and that's going to take some work. But I think we need a comprehensive solar bylaw to keep this stuff. Uh, in control and to piecemeal this and throw it out there and think it's going to solve the problem. Not uh, the other thing is, is when they um, will, let's say uh, on 10 acres, they couldn't possibly put four megs when you come right down to it, because there's a bunch of things that are required. There's uh, infrastructure and so on that has to be included in the site, which would have to be included in every site. And hypothetically, um, if you had a 10 acre parcel and you strip the trees off of it, then you had another 10 acre parcel and you strip the trees off of it and you take another thing and you strip the trees off of it. How does that save anything? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't really fit the bill. You know, I mean, what it needs is we need to think about other alternatives and all that kind of stuff. In my opinion, that's just what I'm saying. I think it's not ready for prime time. Okay, thank you. Alan. Um, basically what Patrick is saying is correct. The, uh, I believe the last 40 acre project 
generated six megawatts. We actually bought that, uh, the credits from uh, Stage Power way back in the beginning. Uh, so the numbers are a little bit off. Uh, this particular item that they're talking about putting through was really not a, I won't get into whether well, there's a real group or not. I think that it was like a side by that came up during a planning board meeting, which really has, as Derek said, their issues. The, the bottom line is that what they wanted to put through required a five years being cleared ahead of time. So nobody can come in and do 10 acres, 10 acres. You can take, you know, six, 10 acre lots if they're all cleared for five years and you can build solar fields in each one of them. But that's why my concern was on this particular suggestion was, I don't know why there was a maximum of 10 acres because it says it has to be laid, has to be cleared for at least five years. And obviously going forward, uh, we do have a project which is going off subject, I'll do it quickly, uh, on Carver Road in which uh, they're using the UMass Cranberry study that was done probably seven, eight years ago about putting solar fields on top of cranberry bogs. Therefore it doesn't disturb land or anything else and you can still grow cranberries, et cetera. And that project is coming up at fairly large. I think it's half in Carver, half in Wareham. I'd be overjoyed if all the solar projects came down the line like that, because that would stop everybody's complaints because we're not clearing fields. We're using existing land that's been cleared for years. We don't run into mass heritage issues, et cetera. That's all, thank you. Judy? Yeah, I have, I have a problem with some of the issues that Mr. Sullivan has raised. Um, and I believe that those are valid issues and that while I'm in favor of trying to craft a bylaw that encompasses all of the issues that people have been talking about, yeah. um, we, I don't believe that we have the vehicle, I don't believe the correct vehicle is in the starting lineup. And so I, I just think we should not go forward with it we it, you know bring it into there there are too many other issues <laughs> in it um that have to do with who submits and mr muniz um the submission by department heads the charter is silent on that thank you you're welcome yeah, there, there is no yeah you know this is something that you know once again you know, back in 2017, we had the, the work done off of Toby Road, and there was a hue and cry that came out then, you know, bandied about the idea of a solar study committee at that point. We, we didn't do it. So that leads us up to today. You know, one of the things we have to look at this in the context of is we need energy. And let's put it this way. I don't think I don't think a lot of us are real happy with the idea of drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuse, Refuge or you know, expanding drilling in, off of Louisiana and Texas. Uh, certainly, I don't think any of us would support you know, fulfilling our electricity needs with uh, more coal plants. I don't think that's really great for the environment. Uh, you know, Dams, we've got the state actually encouraging people to take dams out, so water power. That may be something we rely on from Quebec, but <laughs> hello, we have an invader, Derek's lap. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get Sandy to match that one. There you go. She won't jump on your lap though. Um, <laughs> I'll just die, that's all. Yeah. You know, so if we're, if we're talking about, you know, the future of the planet, climate change, all that stuff, you know, the alternative energy sources like wind and solar are going to have to be, you know, what, what carries us into the future until somebody comes up with the next bright idea. Uh, so we have to think a little bit about that, too. Our issue is, you know, we're not Boston. Boston's all developed. You can't stick them up there. So guess where they're going to come? They're going to come here where the land is fairly cheap and, and they're going to try to do this. So there's a balance that has to be had here. And you know, my concern is that when you pass something that effectively chokes off the industry, where does this put us in the larger context of environmental concern, global warming and things of that nature? Because, you know, I'm sure some people are going to shake their heads at me saying this, but you can't plug your iPhone into a tree. I mean, you just can't do it. So how, <laughs> how do we balance this? How do right. we this out going forward? Uh, you know, is this something where we look at and a study committee eventually says, okay, you know, there needs to be development in this regard, mm -hmm. but it's capped at X amount of acres per year is the, is the maximum that can be cleared, that sort of thing, so that you at least don't just have it, you know, overwhelming 
the town all at once. You control it better that way. I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. That would be for the study group to look at. So it's none of this is is just cut and dried and you know you can jam a solution in the middle and, and make it go away. Uh, Jim had you know, a Peter. Oh sorry, go ahead, Jim. You had a hand up. Yeah. Peter, it's possible too that if we don't handle this right, that the state uh, and the federal government, who as you well know, are promoting hard to put in alternative energies such as wind and solar. They, they could uh, change the rules and, and lock us out to everything. You know, you know? Um, possible, Jim. Nobody's saying, well, I'm not saying, I'm in favor of solar, um, wind energy, uh, you know, appropriately um, put in appropriate places. Um, some people are, are a little more, um, um, they have greater concerns than I do. Um, related to the impacts. It's just, wh where do we put them? And, and why, as I think um, Selectman Slavin said, you know, look at what they're proposing on, on North, uh, is that North Carver yes. Road? Um, and, you know, that's a great idea. That, that They did that down on Route 58 in Carver also. There's one on the bog on the left as you're going down there. And, um, so, and then, you know, you have parking lots and buildings and places along highways or medians and, you know, along high tensions or gas lines at possible uses that have already been cleared. So um, I, I think this is the, the um, what people are bringing to the forefront is, is to utilize the spaces we've already cleared. We're not trying to kill anybody's ability to make money. We don't want to hurt the town's ability to collect revenues. Um, you can still collect revenues if they're put in other places. And, um, you know, they just want to take a, a step back and, and, you know, take a breath and pause. That, that's the idea behind it. It's not to like, stop it. It's like, whoa, whoa, let's just take a step back. Um, I mean, it could end up being like when we wanted to do the, um, the stuff was it back in 2003 or, uh, you know, related to, to housing and, and the, the size of the acreages and lots and everything, everything was starting to file their, uh, their development plans, the site plan reviews and everything for that. Um, we don't want to have that occur either, but, um, you know, we really need to take a look at it. I'm not against your proposal, uh, Chairman Teitelbaum. I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, I just figured I'd throw it out there for, uh, some discussion. Yep, no, and it's good because I know Thank some you. of the people listening in are very concerned about the issue. And, you know, I, I don't want them thinking that they're just getting some pat dismissal from the board tonight on it. It's that, you know, we, we do take this seriously. And, you know, we, we do wanna work with, with all the different constituencies here and try to come up with something that, you know, perhaps uses uh, less, less land, uh, or involves less land clearing in some fashion and try to reuse some of the cleared land. I understand that, you know, part, part of this is too, uh, you know, how does it work, you know, for economies of scale? I mean, I'm not, you know, my grandfather was an electrical engineer. He built power plants. I'm not, and I know nothing about them. I know nothing about the industry. Um, so I think it behooves us to, to look into the question, what works? The other thing too is, how do we how do we go forward with this? We know that we can put uh, solar panels on our homes. How do we look going forward at, at construction of large buildings? Do we want to make it part of our building uh, requirements that the truss work, uh, the rafters, what have you, are strong enough to support eventual solar? Because what you know is economical for somebody to do now with today's technology that might limit the commercial applicability of solar to, to the buildings of certain sizes, that could all change with technology. That could change going down the road. It could become feasible for somebody who's got a 20,000 square foot building to pop solar panels up and not just generate solar for their business within that building, but also to put it into the power grid. So th these are all things that really need to be talked about. So that's, that's kind of what I'm looking, you know, hopefully if town meeting will establish such a committee and we vote to put it on a warrant, that, that's what I'm looking for it to do is take a, a comprehensive look at the issue. 
So that's that. Uh, we need to um, address the Harbor Services permit articles. There are two of them. Yeah. I move that we um, approve the Harbor Services permits receipts reserved for appropriation account uh, for the spring 2021 town meeting. So yeah, we've got two. One is a one is an interest article, and the other one is is the uh, for something that's already been correct been started. The other is is uh, acquiring some new gear for the uh, Harbor Master Department. Usual. So, so, so your motion is for both articles, correct? Yes. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Alan, second by Alan. Uh, any discussion? No? Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Uh, Jim? Oh, your mic's off. Can't hear you. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm, it's cutting me out and then it, it reloads again and then the mic's not on. So anyhow, um, is this, uh, these engines for the boat, is that one of the um, requests? One is 67,900 to be transferred for um, maintenance and improvement. And the other is $3,800 uh, for maintenance improvements for the um, payment of the bond anticipated note authorized with the onset floating dock. But yeah, the, the floating dock. Yeah, That's for um, that. interest or? Um, okay, thank you. Because we payment on yeah. the van, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Payment on thank the van. Thank you. You're welcome. Good, Jim, do you know the, did you see the other items, Jim? Do you want to read through those, What the what's compromised? Um, well, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, pull it up here on my um, PDF and I can't see it. So yeah, it would be nice if, if we kind of read through the some of the things. Yeah, Mr. Um, Chairman, I'll, re I'll read through if that's okay with you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so the first one is the vehicle lease payment. So that's 22,200 and that's a final lease payment for two vehicles that were approved at the 2017 fall town meeting. Uh, $4,000, that's for vessel dockage. That's a patrol boat dockage for the 2021 boating season. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, officer firearms, safety and rescue equipment, 17,500. Update of firearms and non-lethal tasers in cooperation with the Wareham Police Department. <coughs> This process allows both departments to utilize uniform equipment. In addition, the department looks to obtain two cold water rescue suits and updates to all life jackets and waterway safety equipment. Communication upgrade 7,500, replace outdated base style communications radios in department vehicle. This communication equipment allows us to communicate with boaters and emergency responders and all handheld radio, uh, radio batteries and then navigational aid updates, uh, $11,000, and that's to replace 32 worn and damaged navigation aids, their chain and anchoring hardware, and replace uh, Onset Beach's 1,500-foot swim line. So that compromises the, um, uh, the, the bulk of the total of the funds. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. We've got a motion and a second. Anything further? Uh, roll call vote. Alan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. They're both on. Five zero zero. And, and that one was sent to me beforehand. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You had it. Um, <laughs> we can go down to charter changes uh, subcategory F, which is charter changes. I had um, the ladies in the office send all of the documentation, all of the explanations for chart one and chart two for the charter changes that were recommended. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that were not um, obvious after you got all of that stuff. So I would move- We're just put voting to put it on the, the warrant, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I would move putting uh, town charter chart two F 
on the warrant. Okay, we have a motion by Judy. Yeah. And, and second by Jim. I'll say. Yeah, okay. That's why I thought the two fingers were for. <laughs> uh, okay, roll call vote, Alan. Yeah, so, oh, you can, can you, yeah, you can hear me. Oh, do you, do you have questions? Rose up again. Would it be easier if you called Derek's telephone um, and hear him or something? Well, I just wanted to, we're just voting to put everything on. That's the correct, warrant, sir. Correct. This is yes, sir. Down. So, um, you know, let's just make it easy and um, we're just putting on the warrant. There's no discussion, really. And you, you know, this, this group did a, a good job and worked hard. I'm frozen again, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> Do you, no, you want to change your motion to make it F well, through I? Because Jim is yeah, Jim. let's just, just do okay. it. We can discuss I'll change it later my... so we can get it all done with. They work very hard and I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Um, I move that we approve the um, inclusion of town charter chart two, subsections F, G, H, and I. Second. Okay. So we have a motion by Judy, uh, seconded by Patrick to put F through I on. Roll call vote, Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. Judy. Yes. Uh, yes, five zero zero for all. Uh, all we have left now, uh, that takes care of the actual articles. Uh, the, that we're doing that have been submitted to us from the town administrator, town department, so on and so forth, committees. Um, we do have the petition article for the naming of the new elementary school that was dropped off by Mr. Flaherty et al. And I thought we were going to put that on for them. I thought that we already made that clear to them the last time. Yeah, but you know what? They they liked uh, getting the signatures because I think they, they, they made a, a, a point of saying that to me that they that they wanted to be the petitioners, so. I will move the article, um, the naming of the new elementary school located at 63 Minot Avenue, Wareham, Mass, to be placed on the spring 2021. Don't time. have to do that, it's automatic. Yeah, it goes on by operation okay. of law, so there's no need for us to vote on it. Okay. And the same applies to the local initiative uh, program article that was dropped off this afternoon. Yep. Uh, they hadn't had a chance to verify the signatures on that one, but it, it goes on the warrant. And if the signatures turn into an issue, then it's a matter for the moderator to declare the article out of order at town meeting. What was that, Peter? I don't think I saw that. That came in late this afternoon at like 430. This was pre presented by uh, Brenda Ekstrom et al. And it would uh, it would alter the zoning uh, to allow some local initiative programs under affordable housing. Uh, and so on and so forth. I don't want to describe the article because everybody should read it for themselves, but that, that's basically what it is. Wow. So, so that came in today. So uh, we will have both sets of these petitioners come to a future meeting uh, so they can present their articles so we can make our votes whether to recommend. Alan? What's the status on the, uh, the miniatures and stuff that was a citizen's petition? My understanding was it was going to roll over as well. The which one? The banning of uh, miniatures. Nips. Nips. Miniatures. I do it. I, yeah, there wasn't anything submitted. My understanding was it was going to roll over from the previous. Well, we can't roll over a petition article because no action was taken. Everything that didn't go on, the, everything that went in the consent agenda for the fall town meeting, unfortunately, gets dumped. But they could bring it to the special, Mr. Slavin. Yeah, we'd have to get more signatures. That would be the difference. So, Mr. Chairman, if I would, if we were going to do the um, petitioner for the school change and put it on anyways, maybe we should do that for the, the nip bottle as well. I mean, that's... I agree. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I agree. Why not? The only reason okay. I bring it up, I, I asked the question. I'm not going to get anybody in trouble, but I was told that we didn't have to do anything. Yeah, but the, oh. the the difference is that he turned in a new petition with new signatures for this for this upcoming meeting. So we'll take so a you, vote on it. We, we could put it on as uh, for ourselves, we could put it on, but we can't put it on for a petitioner. 
Yeah, cor correct. You're right. No, what yeah. I was saying is we did that for the school on the last go round. We put their art, we put an article on, right. and then they submitted a petition again on top of it. So I moved that the selectmen um, put a nip bottle ban, put the nip bottle ban article, which was previously submitted by um, uh, citizen petition onto the spring 2021 annual. Second. Uh, Jim. I'm totally against this. Jim had a question. Jim is frozen again. <laughs> yeah. He's got, got He's the magic got finger it. pointing. He's, He's got the finger. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a smile. Yeah. Yeah, I thought we were, uh, we'd do it on the special, but whatever you want to do since oh. the, the annual is basically. Okay, uh, fine. I'll put it on the special. I, I've changed my motion to be on okay. to the special. I'll revote <laughs> my second for that. Jim, at least it froze. Jim back, is Jim back in this? No, he's frozen. There yeah, he is. No, not. Yeah. Um, as long as we're, the process we're using, everyone's good with it. I don't know what our um, esteemed attorney thinks on this. Are we good with this, Mr. Bowen? Yes, sir. I'm frozen again. <laughs> okay, so so right, we're gonna roll call vote out of you guys while I still got Jim breathing here. Alan. Yes. I'm Patrick. Sorry. What is this? To put it on the special? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm a no on this one. Okay, Patrick's a no. Uh Jim. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give us the uh, finger, Jim. I really would have liked yes. to have had some no, no, Give us the thumb up. That Okay, there's a yes from Jim. I'll, I'll accept that as a no. yes. Judy. Yes. Uh, myself, yes, 410. That will go on the special. Peter, we didn't get to say anything. I'd like to say something about it. Go ahead. Um, first off, uh, I get what everybody's trying to do, and believe me, I applaud it. And uh, the fact that uh, these things are a pain in the pain in the tail and they're everywhere and I hate it and I hate to see them and I wish there was a way but this is a uh, by doing it town by town this is a financial hit for the uh, for the liquor stores in fact um, you might as well I could tell you right now you could put out a business six six at least six that I know of you'd put out of business because they make all their money on nips um, and literally they make all their money on the nips so when you cut the nips and everybody will just go to the next town to get them. And that's, uh, that's a bad thing. And that's why I'm not in favor of it. I think the state should take the handle on this and say, okay, yeah, we're going to get rid of nips. I mean, they got rid of, uh, they talk a lot about plastic, but nobody will step up to the plate and do what they need to do. And this, and they're asking us to do something that's going to hurt our own business. And I'm just not up for that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Understood. You know, it's interesting when they, uh, and this is, I probably shouldn't talk, but you think about it, they, they banned the selling of the Lucy's. You know, yeah, think, yeah, like, exactly. You know, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, they need to step up to the plate and fix this problem is what they need to do. So. Okay, you know. well, I think that wraps up the, the uh, spring annual warrant. Uh, I moved to pay the payment under 12, authorize the payment to the law office of Richard P. Bowen. No, we have to close the warrant first. Oh, crap. Okay. I move to close the warrant. Second. Okay. Motion to close the spring annual town meeting warrant by Judy, seconded by Patrick. Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. <clears throat> Judy. Yes. Myself, yes, 500, the warrant is closed. Uh, now you can go ahead and pay the attorney. But what, okay. don't we want to hire him first? Well, yeah. We're going to pay him first and then we'll hire him. Okay. Um, uh. And we'll <laughs> authorize the payment of the law. We're pay him first? <laughs> no. Yes, law office of Richard P. Bowen. Uh, that's wrong. That's something wrong with that. <laughs> Second. Okay, motion to... Motion to pay Attorney Bowen by Judy, seconded by Alan. Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Judy. Yes, please. Jim. Yes. Myself, yes, 500, zero, zero, so he will get paid. Let's jump back and get him appointed. I move to appoint. Uh, well, I don't know about that. 
Well, you have to know about that one, huh? He said. <laughs> move to appoint the law office of Richard P. Bowen as town. I can't believe he still wants to do it. He's got gray hair. P.T. Barnum had something to say about that. Uh, so we have a motion by Judy and a second by... Second. Alan, roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Jim. Yes. Judy. Yep. Myself, yes. Five zero zero. You're in for another year. Mr. We Chairman. Should, we, should make, we should make public uh, the salary. Well, we don't have to number if you don't want it, whether it's the same salary or not. It's the same. Thank you, Sport. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Derek you does too, I'll bet. Cut? Don't want to take a cut and pay? Two <laughs> percent? No. That wasn't part of the motion. You're out of order. See, I'm protecting you here, Rich. Oh, thank you. <laughs> In the same pay we get. Yeah, exactly. Forget All right. Raise on that one. All right. So we got through town business. Do we have any town administrator report to hear? Uh, no, no, Mr. Chairman. No. You Thank know, you. Uh, liaison initiative reports. I think we already kind of did those. Jim, did you have anything? Because I think you were absent for that part. Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it be. I, I don't want to kill the internet connection I have right now. Okay. Um, go ahead. No more fingers. Well, we did approve the minutes already, so that just leaves one thing. Oh, shut to adjourn. Second. Oh. Can, I, can, I, can I ask one thing? Yes. Did we ever, did we ever, um, decide anything on the signage for Audubon? No. No. So, I, I mean, I, I, it's no big deal for me one way or the other, um, but I, I just, you know, it was just kind of left hanging. So, anyhow, maybe next time yep. or, or not. I, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we have a motion to adjourn by Alan, seconded by Patrick. Roll call vote. Alan. So I'm, sure. I'm, I'm set, so you guys are here. Okay. Alan said yes. Patrick? Yes. Jim? Oh, he froze again. Oh, he's frozen. Yes. yes. Okay. We, we got him in. We got him in. Okay. Judy? Yes. Myself? Yes. You got to uh, laugh out of Judith, anyhow. <laughs> Thank you, Wear Him. Uh, we will see you next week. Take care. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye, Jim. Good luck with that connection. <laughs> Good night.